Hey everyone, welcome back to JM Lectures. This is the second unit of grade 12 physics, oscillations and waves. The question is as follows. Question 18 says, what makes an oscillatory motion a simple harmonic motion? So this is literally asking us for the definition of a, what a simple harmonic motion is. But first let's understand what it's talking about when we say oscillatory motion. So an oscillatory motion, or definitely oscillations, just has means vibrations, okay? Vibrations, or you can also consider it as back and forth motion, okay? So an oscillatory motion is something like a pendulum. Okay, so a pendulum, which moves back and forth between its different points, is an example of an oscillatory motion. Or a spring, for example. A spring that's compressed and then released will move in a back and forth, or a vibration, or also known as an oscillatory motion. But now we're asked the specific qualities of a simple harmonic motion. Okay, the simple harmonic motion, which is a type of oscillatory motion, but it has very specific characteristics. Let me write down what these characteristics are. A simple harmonic motion has two concepts. It has acceleration and it has displacement. What makes a simple harmonic motion so special is that first, the acceleration and displacement are proportional in magnitude, meaning if acceleration increases, displacement increases. If acceleration decreases, displacement decreases. And on top of that, their directions are opposite. How can I represent that? I can put a negative sign over here. I can put a negative sign over here, but let me just put it here, okay? So, this, what this shows us, this is our answer actually. Simple harmonic motion is an oscillatory motion in which the acceleration and the displacement have directly proportional magnitudes but opposite directions, okay? So again, both of these are vectors. So since we're considering vector quantities, we have to consider their magnitudes, we have to consider their direction. So let me write that down. Magnitudes, proportional, proportional, okay, there's an AL over there, and directions opposite, directions opposite. So it's as simple as that. If you know this definition, then you know the definition of simple harmonic motion, but it will help us if we see how this is true, okay? So let's consider a pendulum, which is a good example of a simple harmonic motion. A pendulum starts at this equilibrium point, this point right here, when it's not moved. If you lift this pendulum, if you lift this pendulum, you displace it into some point here. And if you release this pendulum, it'll accelerate back, go past this equilibrium point, and reach some point here, an equal distance from here, in fact, okay? So a pendulum is a good example of a simple harmonic motion, we'll see why in a bit. First concept you have to understand is that this position here is the equilibrium position, okay? So this equilibrium position is where we discuss the displacement travel. So let's just discuss the displacement travel in blue. So displacement is in, is positive when you are leaving the equilibrium point, okay? So we have a positive displacement here, and it's a displacement increase, okay? If we come back, that would be a negative displacement. On our way back, we have a negative displacement because we're going towards the equilibrium point. And again, the pendulum will come back and it'll go away from its equilibrium point. So it goes away from the equilibrium point, giving a positive displacement, and again, it reaches this point and it comes right back to give you a negative displacement. Okay, again, when I'm saying negative and positive, I'm not talking about increase and decrease. I'm talking about direction. This is a very important term. Negative and positive, when you're talking about vectors, has to do with their direction, not their magnitude. But this is actually an increase in displacement. This is also an increase in displacement, but it's just in the opposite direction. That's something that must be understood, okay? so. Uh, let's talk about the acceleration. Well, when we start from this point here, okay, because let's say that we move the body here and we release it here, right? It starts to accelerate towards the equilibrium point. So it accelerates towards the equilibrium point and it is a positive acceleration. Once it moves away from the equilibrium point, it has a negative acceleration. So it goes away from the equilibrium point 
and then it comes back towards the equilibrium point. I wish I had space here. When it goes back towards, it's speeding up, so it has a positive acceleration. And again, when it goes away from the equilibrium point, it has a negative acceleration. Okay, so this should help us describe the directional conditions, the direction conditions of acceleration and displacement. We see that when they are, when the pendulum is moving away from equilibrium, displacement is positive and acceleration is negative in its direction. Okay. Similarly, when they're moving towards equilibrium, acceleration is positive and displacement is negative. And that's what we show with this negative sign right here. They have opposite directions, but they are still proportional. Because we see that this arrow, the arrow that I have here, actually shows the magnitude. Okay, so we see that when we have an increase, we see that when we have a change in acceleration, we have a change in displacement. And if we have a change in acceleration, we have a change in displacement. So once more, the negative and positive signs is how I describe the direction. You see, we have negative acceleration, positive displacement. Negative displacement, positive acceleration. The arrows is how I represent the magnitude, okay? So we see that the magnitudes are proportional. Not necessarily equal, but they are proportional. A change in acceleration will give you a change in displacement. So this is how you graphically understand the concept. But again, if you know these two points, you'll be able to answer the question easily. We say that it is the first choice right here. The acceleration of the motion is directly proportional in magnitude, proportional in magnitude, but opposite in direction, the opposite in displacement, I'm sorry. So. That is how you describe simple harmonic motion. The other choices have to do more with velocity, but that's not really a good way of defining simple harmonic motion. Using acceleration and displacement is the best way to do so. And that's it. All right, the next question in oscillations and waves is the following. Question 19 says, the two end fixed of string of length 0.5 meters has a mass per unit length of two grams per meter. If the tension in the string is 80 Newton, what is the second harmonic frequency? Okay, so we're talking about waves here and specifically the waves on a string. But first again, let us write what we are given. We are given the length of this string that we're talking about. The length of the string is equal to 0 0.5 meters. We are also given what was known as the mass per unit length, which we represent with mu, as two grams per meter. All that's saying is that if we have a length of a string, if it's one meter, the mass is two grams. If it's two meters, the mass is four grams, and so on and so forth. Moving on, we're also given the tension of the string, and the tension is given to us by 80 Newton. What we are required to find is something known as the second harmonic, which we'll represent with F2. First, let's discuss what the heck we're talking about here, okay? Let us think of a string specifically a spring that's fixed on two ends, meaning one end of the string and the other end of the string are both fixed on some board or something, right? So we have a string here. This string, once it's hit, think of a string of a guitar. When you try to pull the string away, it will start to vibrate along this equilibrium point, okay? What we call the first harmonic is when there is a wave like this. In fact, let me represent it with different colors. Okay. So what we call a first harmonic is when the wave formed is something like this, okay? Meaning the wave is moved back and forth and back and forth like this. So this is the first harmonic. And the frequency of this first harmonic, F1, is equal to V over 2L. V is the speed of the wave divided by twice the length of the wave. Now, let us consider the second harmonic, which is actually our question. The second harmonic also has a string where two ends are fixed, but instead we have two waves, okay? So we have one wave actually moving like this and like this. Okay, so this is our second harmonic motion. So second harmonic motion, luckily enough, is simply twice the first harmonic motion. Then there's the third and the fourth and the fifth, but they all have the same concepts. F3 is just three times F1, F4 is just four times F1, and it goes on and on and on like that. But we don't have to focus on that right now. What we are focused on is the second harmonic motion. So, um, 
if our second harmonic motion is equal to twice the first, then the second harmonic motion would be twice of F1, V over 2L. We can cancel out the 2 to get that F2 is equal to V over L. And that is the formula we'll be using here. All this is saying is that the frequency of the wave of a two-end fixed string is equal to the speed of that wave divided by the length of that string. So if we look at our, what we're given, we're given the length, but we're not given speed. We're given these two other concepts, uh, mass per unit length and the tension. Luckily enough, we can use these concepts in order to find the speed. The speed of a string is equal to the square root of the tension over the mass per unit length. All it's saying is that if the string is tighter, for example, or if there's more tension, that will cause an increase of the speed of the string. If the, if the, the string is lighter, for example, that will also cause an increase. Less mass per unit will cause an increase in speed. Anyway, this formula is help. This formula really helps you to find the speed of a wave on a string. So let us plug in the numbers we have here. We have that the speed would be equal to the square root of the tension, which is 80 Newton, divided by the mass per unit length, which is two grams per meter, but uh, grams is not the SI unit. So let's go over here and convert that. That would be equal to 0 0.002 kg per meters, which is the SI unit. So 80 Newton over 0 0.002 kg per meter. And we'll get the final answer of the speed to be the square root of 40,000 meters squared per second squared. And we'd get the speed to be 200 meters per second. All right. So 200 meters per second is the speed that we would find. But again, that isn't our final answer. We are looking for the second harmonic frequency and we needed the speed in order to find that. So again, we can plug in our numbers right here to find that the second harmonic frequency is equal to the speed, 200 meters per second, divided by the length. And the length is given as 0 0.5 meters. So the frequency two is gonna be equal to 4 100 hertz, which is the unit of frequency. 400 hertz is our final answer for the second harmonic motion. So again, we could have just as easily been asked to find the first or the third or the fourth or whatever it may be. But since we're asked to find the second, all we had to do is multiply the first by two and know that the speed of a string is given by this specific formula, the tension divided by the mass per unit length. So if you look at our choices, we see that choice C is our correct answer. 400 hertz, and that's it.